Hello my chess friends! In this round 8 of the Tata Steel Masters Tournament, you will see Magnus Carlsen outcalculate his very strong opponent, America's number one player, Fabiano Caruana, by looking a total of 14 ply into the future, that is, 7 moves by each player, and spotting something that his opponent apparently totally missed, and was subsequently unable to deal with. So let's jump right into this game, so you can see Carlsen's incredible middle game vision at work. Caruana with the white pieces begins the game with e4. From Carlsen we have e5, and we go into a very standard Rui Lopez opening. I'm not going to explain all these moves because they've been seen millions of times, and you can go study this opening on your own if you'd like. I'm just going to get us to this point where Caruana makes a relatively unusual move. After Carlsen castles, he plays the move a4. A little more common here is to play c3, preparing d4, or h3, but this early a4 does come with the threat. That is to take the pawn on b5, and if Carlsen were to recapture with the pawn, he would lose his rook. Carlsen, realizing this, simply bypasses that threat by pushing his pawn to b4. Now Caruana plays a5, taking more space and preventing Carlsen from defending his b4 pawn with a pawn, since a5 is no longer possible. Of course, Caruana's pawn on a5 cannot be defended with a pawn either. Now we have d6 from Carlsen. It's a good move. If Caruana were to strike in the center with d4, then he could take that pawn with a pawn and he would not have to worry about the move e5 kicking his knight off f6 because d6 is controlling that square. Caruana now plays c3, preparing the move d4 with the possibility of replacing that pawn on d4, maintaining his big center if Carlsen were to take on d4. Carlsen plays rook to b8, placing his rook on a file that he can open at any moment with the move b takes c3. We got h3 from Caruana preventing any bishop g4, which would undermine the defense of the d4 square, since he wants to play d4 very shortly. Now h6 from Carlsen, a little bit of a waiting move. It keeps a white piece off of the g5 square, which is often useful in this opening. And he's just asking the question, what are you going to do, Caruana? Are you going to play d4? Caruana says, yes, I am, and strikes in the center. And at this moment, Carlsen takes on c3 opening the file for his rook, but more importantly, clearing this b4 square for his knight. You'll see why that's significant in a moment. After b takes c3, he takes on d4. Now here, if Caruana were to take with the pawn and try to maintain this nice pawn duo in the center, Carlsen could strike forward with d5. And if you play e5, a lot of times this is good for white, but here, black can get away with the move knight to e4. After which queen c2 would be a good move for white, hitting the knight on c6, also threatening to take on d5, followed by taking on e4, picking up that knight, removing the defender. But here, because the pawn is no longer on b4, because of the move b takes c3, there would be knight to b4. And this would not be good for white. So that's why Caruana does not recapture with the pawn. He recaptures with the knight. Threatening to win a piece on c6, Carlson defends with bishop d7. And we got bishop to f4 more central control, maybe there'll be an e5 at some point. Now knight e5 from Carlsen, good move, eyeing the d3 square, so if you try to develop naturally with knight d2, you know, there's going to be knight d3 with a fork of the rook and bishop, that's no good. So Caruana goes for knight to a3 instead. We got rook to e8 from Carlsen. Caruana plays bishop to g3, preparing f4, kicking the knight off its nice central post. But Carlsen has no fear of that. He plays bishop to f8, and after f4, this is the moment where he makes a 14-move calculation. Seven moves for each side. So technically, you should call it 14-ply calculation, or seven complete moves, that is, seven moves for each color. He plays the move knight to c6. Now, I'm going to show you the entire variation that I'm assuming Carlsen had to be aware of, or else this move knight c6 would not work. It begins with what was played in the game. First move, e5. Okay, d takes e5, f takes e5. The knight on f6 is hit. Carlsen trades off his knight on c6, knight takes d4, comes with an attack on the bishop, so you really need to take out the knight with the pawn. And at this point, Magnus Carlsen plays a brilliant move, which he must have seen a few moves earlier. I think Caruana was expecting that this knight had to move, and it doesn't have many options. In fact, it only has one option, to go to h7. And white would have a big advantage here. The engine is saying more than one pawn in white's favor. Because black has lost central control, white has these two beautiful pawns. F7 is a weak point. It's being targeted by the bishop. At some point, it could be targeted by a heavy piece on this file. But Carlsen did not need to play knight to h7. 
he must have foreseen this move, bishop to c6, which I think caught Caruana off guard. But then he saw the variation that Magnus Carlsen must have calculated earlier. What happens if you take the knight on f6? Well, here Carlsen would have rook takes e1 check. And you got to take with the bishop if you want to hang on to your b3 bishop. The queen's defending. But now there's rook takes b3. And if you take with the queen, there's queen takes d4 check with the fork. So black's going to pick up that rook on a1. Queen takes a1. And after this move, a total of 14 ply. That is, seven moves for each side has been played. Since the point all the way back here where Carlsen played this move, knight to c6. So quite impressive calculation by Carlsen. And if we go back to the end of the variation where the queen took the rook on a1, we see that black is a pawn up with the bishop pair, is threatening to win the a3 knight, with the help of the bishop, is threatening to win the bishop on e1. So white would need to play knight to c2 to answer both those threats. But then queen takes f6, grabs another pawn. Black is now two pawns up and the game is effectively over. So Caruana, apparently demoralized after he saw that variation that he could not take the knight on f6, he makes a big blunder with the move bishop to c2. A better move would have been rook to c1, attacking the bishop on c6, when taking the knight on f6 is a little more of a threat because the rook would not be vulnerable to being captured by the queen, as we saw in the previous variation at the end of the line where the queen took on d4 with the fork. So here the engine's giving bishop to d5, getting the bishop out of danger, and then bishop takes d5, knight takes d5, and it's saying the position is roughly equal. But now let's look at the problem with what Caruana played this bishop c2 move. This move also seems to address the variation we looked at after pawn takes on f6, because as you remember in that line, rook takes bishop on b3 was a key move for black. So while bishop c2 does address the problem of rook takes b3, unfortunately, it takes protection off the d5 square, which gives Carlsen a crushing move, which he finds, queen to d5, threatening checkmate. And Caruana here has no good way to defend against checkmate while also keeping defense of this d4 pawn. So let's look at his options. If you were to play queen to d2, bishop b4. Oops a daisy, you move your queen, there's bishop takes rook. Of course, if you play queen to e2, then d4 falls. So defending with the queen isn't really working. What's tried in the game is rook to e2, but now Carlson just attacks the d4 pawn further with rook to b4, and that pawn cannot be defended. If you try rook d2, well, there's just rook takes d4. And this rook cannot move forward to take the rook on d4, or you've taken defense off of g2 and there's queen takes g2 checkmate. You cannot play bishop f2 to try to defend the pawn that way, or else you've blocked the rook's access to g2 and there's queen takes g2 checkmate. If at this point you decide you want to try to take the knight, well this also fails to rook takes e2, queen takes e2, and queen takes d4 check, picking up the rook. So Caruana, realizing that his d4 pawn is going to fall, he just gets his king off of that diagonal. There's rook takes d4, hitting the queen. Queen goes to b1. Now Carlsen plays a very nice simplifying move. Knight to e4. Attacking the defender of this e5 pawn. Caruana does not want to drop any more pawns. He's already a pawn down, so he takes the knight out. We got rook takes e4. Now attacking the defender of the g2 pawn. So Caruana doesn't really have anything better than taking the rook. Now there's queen takes e4, threatening checkmate, hitting the queen. So we have a trade of queens. Bishop takes e4. And after the smoke clears, black is a clear pawn up with the bishop pair, more active pieces. The rook's tied down to defending this knight for a moment. White has a completely lost position. Caruana plays knight to c4, getting his knight out of the view of that bishop, defending a couple pawns. We have rook to b8, putting the rook on an open file, rook to c1. Anticipating the move rook to b4, he wants to leave his knight here so that these pawns can be defended, hopefully. But after Carlson's rook to b5, now there's ideas of rook to c5, pinning the knight to the rook. Caruana plays e6, a desperate bid for some activity, opening the diagonal for his bishop, eyeing the c7 pawn, so that after f takes e6, there's bishop takes c7. But Carlson continues rook c5, pinning the knight to the rook. So now Caruana really needs to play bishop f4, adding some defense to his rook, so that after Carlson's next move, bishop d5, at least this knight's free to move, since the rook is defended. But after this move, Caruana resigns anyway, because his knight is hit twice, it needs to move, but if he goes to e5, then there's just rook takes, bishop takes, 
bishop b4, and you're not saving your a pawn. Carlson will end up with two extra pawns in the bishop pair, after which it will be completely hopeless for Caruana. So a lovely performance from Magnus Carlsen with impressively deep insight into the position with an apparent calculation of seven moves for each player, a total of 14 ply, which appeared to catch Caruana off guard and caused him to blunder, giving Carlsen his second win in a row in this Tata Steel's Masters tournament. He's definitely making a comeback. So thank you for watching. Please subscribe to this channel. You will see more analysis like this coming your way very soon. And I will see you on the next video.